In this module, we're talking about what are called galvanic cells. So what is a galvanic cell? It's a device where you can take chemical energy and convert it into electrical energy. And the way you do this is by taking the redox reaction and separating out the redox reduction half reaction from the oxidation half reaction and allow electrons to flow between the, through the two, but you have to connect them with a wire, some way to separate them. So um, let's look at, for example, this redox reaction right here. And in this, this is a balanced redox reaction in acidic solution, the permanganate ion, and iron two. The, it ends up the reduction half reaction looks like this, and the oxidation half reaction looks like this. So we can say in this redox reaction that five electrons are transferred um, from, well, from iron two onto permanganate. Now, if we separate the half reactions into beakers and connect them by a wire with a metal plate called an electrode in there, what will happen is at first, if you look really carefully, you'll see electrons tra being transferred from the iron two onto the permanganate. But what happens is real quickly, you get a buildup of charge. Well, how does that happen? Well, if you think about this, over here in this left-hand beaker, where the reduction is happening, before these five electrons flow, we have a total of you know seven positive charges, eight hydrogens and one permanganate. After the electrons, after five electrons flow over, and you make the manganese two, you only have two positive charges. So now we didn't have, well, really the positive charges all by themselves. This this hydrogen came with something. Maybe it was nitric acid. So maybe there's eight nitrates floating around in there. Now. Their charge was balanced before by the eight hydrogen ions. Now, it's not, right? We have, here we have fewer positive charges, which means there's gonna be a counter ion here somewhere hanging around. Negative charge, negative charge is gonna build up in here real quickly. And the opposite's true here. Here we start with iron two. As we take the electrons away, we make iron three. So we have three positive charges for each iron instead of two. We build up positive charge over here. Well, when you have a buildup of charge, it gets really difficult to force that charge to build up any farther, in this case, by pushing electrons from here to here. So we have to think of something. But before we do that, let's look, look at what causes this to, to even go in the first place. There's um, a pull on these electrons from the iron by the permanganate. And it's the, that permanganate's causing the electrons to flow here. Now, it stops real quickly because the charge builds up. But let's just look at what we can do about that. We can use what's called either a salt bridge or a porous disc. Um, in a salt bridge, there might be something called auger plugs in here. Some, what, what it is, it's like kind of like jelly. But what it does is it allows ions to flow from one half cell. We call these half cells, by the way, from one half cell to the other. So let's say the electrons are flowing this way and we're building up negative charges here. Let's say you get a bunch of excess nitrate ions floating around now, not balanced by positive charges. What happens is, and, there, and there's positive charges over here, right? So the iron three is you know, building up that extra positive charge. That's gonna pull these negatively charged ions, say the nitrates through here, over into here, and you end up with the charge balanced, allowing these electrons to continue to flow. So basically it's a complete circuit. Electrons are pulled from the iron two, we make an iron three, over here onto the mag permanganate, and then the nitrate, or whatever the anion is, flows up through here, back down to here, continues on flowing. Uh, a porous disc works basically the same way. It's, it's just like a, um, a, a disc of, um, that will allow ions to float through, but it doesn't allow the, um, anything else to go. So that, that, that works pretty well. So now let's look at what we have. We have a galvanic cell. We have the anode over here. The anode, this is where oxidation happens. Remember, remember these terms. Anode means oxidation, cathode means reduction. The way I remember it is, because it's really easy to get these mixed up, is it starts with a vowel, starts with a vowel, starts with a consonant, starts with a consonant, right? A and O, C and R. Anyway, so the electrons in this you know, we kind of flipped it around. Here, this is where the iron two is uh, having electrons pulled off and being converted into iron three. The electrons are coming up through here, 
down on here to the permanganate, right? We're just making manganese too. Now what's going to happen is that the whatever the anion is is going to flow through this porous disk over here, balancing the charge, and electrons continue to flow. So remember that the anode is where oxidation happens, or another way of saying that, it's where the reducing agent is. Remember, the whatever's oxidized is the reducing agent, whatever's reduced is the oxidizing agent. So in the anode, there's oxidation, which is where the reducing agent is. In the cathode, there's reduction, which is where the oxidizing agent is.